In the deepest dark depths of an icy winter, you can't beat a bit of comfort food. And I particularly like a bit of meat-free comfort food. This butternut squash curry served in tender, pillowy naan bread bowls is beautiful. To start off, I'm gonna roast the squash because squash, as beautiful in flavor as it is, can be quite insipid if you don't get all that water out. I always roast it. So squash goes in to the tray. And then on with some flavorless oil. I use sunflower. If you've only got olive oil, don't sweat it, just use that. But sunflower oil is a bit better for this. Be generous with your salt and pepper because the salt's gonna help to take all that moisture out of the squash. Toss this together. And this will roast for about 35, 40 minutes. If it gets a bit dark and charred, that is absolutely fine. Char equals flavor. And while that roasts, I'm gonna make the dough for the naan bread balls. Rather than using yeast, I just use self-raising flour. It cuts the time down and it's just as good. Salt is very important in bread, not just for the flavor, but also to help form the gluten structure. And rather than use water, I use yogurt for this bread, so it's more like a traditional naan bread. But if you were vegan, you could actually leave the yogurt out and use a dairy-free alternative. In with your hands, bring this together. The dough is a bit stiff, a bit dry. All I need to do is add a drop of water to this. Not too much, just a little bit. And as it does come together eventually, which it will do, with a bit of brute force and elbow grease, just keep pushing it down into a dough. And the beauty about this dough is that I'm not gonna bother kneading it. I don't need to form too much gluten in this because I've not got any yeast in there. All it needs to be is bound together. Out on the worktop, knock it about a bit. Just a few seconds, that's all it takes. Pop it back in the bowl and just put it to one side for half an hour. Let's have a check of the squash. Oh, perfect. So a lot of the juice has come out. They've shrunk in size and you've got lovely little bits of golden char around the edge, which is absolutely necessary. So don't think, oh, they're burned. They're not burned. They're just ready. For the flatbreads then, this will make between four and six. Snip it into rough portions, don't weigh them out. Comfort food isn't about exact measurements, it's about being a bit slapdash and happy. Because the dough is fairly dry, you don't need a lot of flour to roll this out, just enough to stop it from sticking a little bit. So a little sprinkle of flour should do this. And roll we go. And don't worry if a few holes appear, just mush them back together with your fingertips. Before I put the dough in the bowls, it's important that I just quickly give them a very light greasing. So just line the bowl with the flatbread. It's one. And I quite like it if these are a bit rough and ready with pleats and folds and scalloped edges. And into the oven with these. Now, all good curries start off with a curry paste. It's just one of those things. And I'm gonna use the stalks from some coriander now. They're gonna go straight into the chopper, but the leaves, the more tender part, I'll save to sprinkle on later on. A shallot, if you've not got shallots, just use a small onion, but anything will do. Some garlic. A chili, you could use a red chili or a green chili. Some ginger. A little bit of dark sugar for this. And the acidic part, some vinegar. And just blitz to a paste. Mm. Just get every last bit. No coriander stalk unchopped. Everything's completely chopped into a into one mass, one paste, and that's exactly how it needs to be. The finer the chop, the stronger the flavor will be. Paste's done. I'm gonna put the pan on. A fairly high heat for this. Bit of sunflower oil in the pan. And when the oil shimmers and it's hot, in with the paste. Now the thing that people often get wrong is not cooking the paste enough. That's a very wet paste. Wet equals water equals dilution. So just make sure that you cook the paste until it's dry. So just leave it. It might take a while. Don't rush a good thing. Do not rush a good curry. These bowls are done. They're puffed up, they're pillowy, golden. Mm. Back to this paste, it's still not there yet. You might think, oh, I can smell it, it smells strongly, but it's not quite dry enough yet. As long as there's steam, 
there's still water in there. But everything else is starting to cook and caramelise. The shallots are caramelising, it's taking the edge off the ginger and the garlic. It's just making everything mix and mingle. So you can see it's starting to stick to the bottom of the pan, which means that it's almost there. It's nice and thick and it's looking dry. So I'm going to add the spices now. A bit of cumin, a couple of cloves, some cardamom pods. And what I always do is bruise these. So just get three or four and then with a knife, just, just bash them open a little bit. That'll help release more flavour. Coriander. Turmeric. And one cinnamon stick. As with the paste, you want to cook the spices for a minute or so. It's not, not quite as long as the paste, but just until they start to smell aromatic. Keep the spices moving. Now, when the spices smell quite strongly, they're perfectly toasted, it's in with the tomatoes. Don't rush this. Let the tomatoes mush down and reduce. Keep stirring every now and again, just scraping the paste off the bottom of the pan. When the tomatoes have mushed down, a little bit of oil on the top, we're going to go in with the stock. All that colour on the bottom of the pan is flavour, so don't shy away from it. Don't be, oh, it's burning, it's not burning, it's cooking. Bring this to a boil and I'm going to turn it down to a simmer, a gentle simmer, and let it cook just for 15 minutes or so. The hard work's done now, the squash is roasted, the balls are done. This is just the peaceful bit. This has been cooking down slowly now for about 15 minutes or so, and I'm going to add all that roasted squash. If you're watching your weight, you can leave all the oil on the bottom of the pan, but that's liquid gold. You've got to add that to the pan. In with some lentils, just out of a can, drained. No boiling, no soaking, just bung them in. Now remember that coriander from before. Well, I used the stalks in the paste. And I've got the leaves here, and I'm just going to roughly chop these. In that goes. and a bit of pepper. Lentils are warmed through, so all that's left to do is serve this up. Don't forget to take the bread out of the Pyrex bowl because your guests will be horrified if you present them a curry in a Pyrex bowl. A bit of rice. And then to crown the glory with this curry. Mm. There you have it. Curry rice in a bready bowl. All I'm going to do now is pop on a bit of chutney, some raita, a couple of poppadoms, and I'm one happy man. For many, many more mouth-watering recipes, subscribe now.